Shalom Lechem Ahai Verei, you know, uh, today is the 17th day of the war. 17, you know that 17 is Tov. So maybe tonight we'll hear some good news. I really believe I'm not a prophet, and not the son of a prophet, but Be'ezrat Hashem, if you remember, that with Thursday, this coming Thursday, I'm looking at my calendar, Yes, this Thursday is 11th of Cheshvan, Yud Aleph. It's the Yorzeh day of Rachel Imenu. And you know, Rachel Imenu is the only mother that she was not buried in Ma'arat HaMachpelah. She Wait, is... Rabbi, when is the Yorzeh tonight? No, no Thursday. Wednesday night. Wednesday night and Thursday. Light candle, remember. Light candle and pray for everyone, you know, that you have the list, Rene has the list of the all the prisoners, all the people who were kidnapped, and to pray for them. That's really, you know, our top priority. And, you know, we have two objects. One, to release the the prisoners, and the number two is to defeat Amalek. So it doesn't contradict one another, but uh, Rahel, as I said before, she was buried in Ma'arata in Efrat, Bederech Betlehem. You know, when, when Yaakov... When Yaakov Avinu asked Yosef to bury him in Ma'arata Machpelah, he was predicting that Yosef will ask him, or in his mind, is why he didn't bury my mother in Ma'arata Machpelah. So Yaakov told him, my dear son, I want you to know there is no any other reason beside Hashem. Hashem told me to bury her because your mother is going to be in charge of all the children outside of Israel. That's why when Rachel, when people, when the mothers were crying for their children to come out from the Galut Eretz Israel, Hashem except only Rachel. Rachel was crying. And he said to Rachel, Stop crying. Clean up your tears from your face. He said, Your children are going to come back to Israel. You don't see because you're crying. When you have tears, you don't see very clear. And then he ends up another time, And they'll come back from the enemy's country. So we have to ask, you know, from Rachel Imenu, Zchut Rachel Imenu, this week it's here. All this month is the month of Rahel Imenu. And I explained to you why. Because the zodiac of the month is Akrav. You know what is Akrav? Akrav is scorpion. You know, that's the zodiac. It's scorpion. Scorpion in Hebrew is Akrav. And Akrav in abbreviation is Akeret Bait. Emma Banim Smeha Hallelujah. So the Akeret Bait, the housewife was Rahel. And we have to pray that Rahel Be'ezrat Hashem will help us will have Biden, will help everybody, you know, to release the prisoners. I know that there is a very, very uh, deep negotiation between America and Qatar. And I want you to know, keep this in mind, Qatar is not a friend of Israel. Al Jazeera is in Qatar. All the leaders of Hamas, they're hiding in Qatar. But right now, even the negotiation about the prisoner is not Israel and Qatar, it's USA and Qatar. And I hope, I, according to what I know from behind the scene, they will try to distinguish, to differentiate between Israelis, we have only one passport, and the people has double citizenship. So that means that Qatar might say, okay, we'll risk whoever has double citizenship. And then to get some some tension between, you know, the people has their passport, has no passport. And that's what trying psychology war. But uh, Israel is not, you know, is not distinguishing. She said we would like to release whoever was kidnapped. It doesn't matter, even if he's not Jewish, he has to be released. It doesn't matter. All of them should be released. But Israel is not, keep in mind, she's not negotiating with Hamas. And there is no any agreement, even in their, you know, background, that we will release prisoners, you know, from Israel for the, for the agreement. So we are waiting. That's why I think the ground forces, the infantry, did not penetrate to Aza because 
Biden is begging to Israel to hold on. That's that's my assumption according to what I read. You know, because the negotiation is very serious and maybe there is good indication that some people, a lot of I hope all of them, but we have to pray. Remember, Tfilah is helping. We have to pray for them to be released, all of them. All of them. Not even one will stay there. And Be'ezrat Hashem, in the merit of Rahel Imenu, in the merit of Rahel Imenu, in the merit of all the tzaddikim, you know, we will see all of them back in Israel. That's number one. Number two, I want you to know, last week we have studied Perek Kuf Mem, 114 Tehillim, because it was perfect for the war. Now, this Shabbat is Parashat Lech Lecha. And Parashat Lech Lecha, and the Haftarah of Parashat Lech Lecha, nothing is more perfect to see the timing. You know, last week it was the Mabul of Noah, the big crisis of the world. Remember in Bereshit we talk about the sword. So see all this parashot giving a lot of clear hint what's going on today between Hamas and Israel. But remember, if people will remember this, you know, in their mind deep, is not really Hamas versus Israel. Is the evil, the good forces against the evil forces. Is all the world, if you know all Europe, and they know the moment they protect Israel now, they protect themselves. Terrorist is a terrorist. And they know it was, remember, whoever, who can forget September 11? Who can forget? But September 11 is terrorist. So terrorists can do Daesh and Al-Qaeda. All of them is the same evil forces. So what Israel is doing really now, the war that we are doing now, is not only for us. It's for the entire universe. The entire world should be very happy and clap their hands for the IDF to defeat Amalek. Because this Amalek can destroy not only Europe and America, they can destroy their own country, their own citizen. They are really evil. But if you remember when USA, when they caught Hussein, the king of Iraq, you remember when they got, they caught Hussein, the king of Iraq, you know, after the war, who was happy? Happiest. You know who? Everybody was happy. But you know who was? The Iraqi citizens. They were very happy. And I'm telling you what I believe, if we will get all the leaders of Hamas, the citizens in Gaza they will say probably Baruch Hashem. They will, not, they will not have the guts to say it loud, but many of them said Baruch Hashem. You know, sure, sure. Hashem, you know that they have the, such a leadership, they don't care about themselves. They could be, Gaza could be the most beautiful country in the world. And they changed to be Gaza the Gehinom, hell of the world. And, and that's the situation. So I'll go straight to the Haftarah, to the Haftarah, and from the Haftarah we'll go to the Parasha. So, you know, when something like this happened, and we and me got on Simchat Torah in the morning, and we heard and we could not believe until this present day what happened, look the first Pasuk. Lama Tomar Yaakov Utedaber Israel? Why Yaakov Israel is the same name, Ken? is the Jewish people. I don't say why Hashem hid himself. Where Hashem was, how Hashem let them do it. You know, the meaning is Isaiah, Yeshayahu Navi say this. He said, you know, we do not understand what's in the mind of Hashem. You know, everything is by Hashem, but we, human beings, we are limited. And Heker, but we, he is unlimited. We are limited. So we cannot see the depth of Hashem. But Hashem knows. But Hashem, if you remember, took us six, eight, ten hours to get organized. We were sleeping probably. Nobody can understand. I'm sure after the war is going to be a big investigation. Big investigation, more than Yom Kippur. You know, who is this fort that they did it? But right now we are in a war. We have to get together to stick together. But what happened to USA? Today, my dear friend, just today I read you know that they have 15,000 Israeli soldiers that nobody mobilized them. They refused to go back home. On their own, volunteer. They said, we must be part of this war. 
This war is for our house, the house of the Jewish people. The spirit over there, nobody wants to go home. The opposite, people are home. They are complaining, you know, to, 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 the, to their commander why they not mobilized yet. But he but said today, he said 15,000 is a lot of soldiers. They refuse and they have to accept them to be part of the war. But everybody was tired than Simchat Torah. So look at Parak Kassel said, Notel Ayayef Koach. What is Notel Ayayef Koach? Hashem give to the tired people strength. Ul En Onim. You know, the people where we were, you know, hopeless. We were, you know, we didn't know what to do. You know, all our power, we lost them. You know, in Simchat Torah in the morning, Otsmayerbe. He will double now the power to IDF. Triple and double the power to Otsmayer Be. Now, do you know which animal they know how to re... I said, I said you know, to re -new, new his life, to renew the life, to renew the strength. You know which animal? What is, I tell you, do you know what, which bird represent the strength? Lion. What? The lion. No, bird, I said, bird. Oh, the phoenix. What? Yeah. What, the on phoenix. The, what do you have on the flag of USA? Eagle. eagle. The, eagle. the eagle. You know what's so eagle. unique about the eagle? It's unbelievable. The eagle is the strongest one. First of all, eagle is the highest one among all the birds. Nobody. But you know where, how he protect his children? He's the only one put the chicks on the back, on his back, on the top. And all the other, they put him in the legs. Why? Because the eagles know that the only one can get them is the hunter. So if he said, if the hunter will shoot arrow, it will be over my dead body. You know, so the eagle really protect their chicks, their children more than any other bird. You know who, who parallel himself to eagle? The, the dog. Ah, yeah, but you remember how was the redemption? Hashem said, Va'esa etchem al kanfe nesharim. Nesher is eagle. I will carry you upon the wings of eagle. He said, eagle, when he see his destination, by the way, you know, when you have a long trip, let's say 10 hours drive, can you drive directly without stopping in the middle of the way to go to rest area? Or we go straight to the destination? We have to stop. You have to stop. You have to take breath. You know what the eagle's doing? When they have destination, they don't stop. They don't see, they don't stop in the restaurant in McDonald's to drink coffee. They see the destination, they go straight to the target. And that's why it says, Do you remember what the Egyptians did when we went to the Red Sea? They went after us. What they did when they went after us? Just watching? They were shooting arrows. They were shooting arrows. And who absorbed the arrows? The pillar of fire. That was a pillar of fire between Am Israel and Egypt. And the pillar of fire, Amud Ha'esh. It's called Amud Ha'esh, the pillar of fire. Who is the pillar of fire? Hashem. Hashem said, don't worry. The Jewish people did not get, did not get even one arrow. All the arrow, just like the eagle. Just like the eagle. Now, I'll give you I'll give another secret about eagle. Eagle, what is the length of his life? What? Okay, I'll tell you what. I said, you know, I checked, you know, in many places. Some places you say this, some places did not say it. I can, one time I'll talk to you about the eagle. There is beautiful songs about the eagle. But the eagle is, he's, when he's 30, when he's 30, he has 30 years, he feels very weak. Very weak, like he feels like he's going to die. So the eagle going very high to the rocks, to the mountain, Big, 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 you know, high mountains. And, you know, when they have caves over there. And they're hiding in the caves. Did you ever see the nails of the eagle? 
He has a big nails. And with the nails of his feet, he is taking off, he himself to himself, all the hair. The hair, the feather from its body. And he's doing it for, for a while. And then, you know, after he take out all the hair, he's, he stayed there for a while. And then the hair growing up again, the new one, renew the hair. And then he revived his life. You know how many more years he gave to himself? 40 more years. The eagle's life is 70 years. The 30 years. So look what he says. The, the young people came and they were very tired. And the Bahurim, the young people, they failed. But the people who believe and remember we learned about the word Tikva last week. You know, Tikva, hope. The people say, Kaveh Hashem Hazak Ve'ametz Libecha. They pray to Hashem. The people, the army. By the way, it's it's so interesting. My wife told me today that they asked, they had a, not a referendum, but questionnaire to the Israeli soldier. What do you need for the Israeli citizen to buy for you? What do you need? Whatever you need, we will buy for you. By the, on behalf of the Israeli citizen. What do you think they ask? Tzitzit. <laughs> Who said tzitzit? Ah, you learned it? You read it? We saw it. Ah, you saw it. He said they ask the soldier, not in the religious. They have, they need tzitziot. Rabotai, my dear friend, don't you feel, don't you smell the Mashiach? I'm not talking about the religious people. I'm saying people not religious. Yes. They ask Tzitziot. So he said... the children in school with their teachers, they give Tzitziot and they send it to Israel. Nahon. He had said, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Don't take it for granted. I'm, I was so excited that I started, you know, my wife told me in the car, she told me this. I was so, so emotional about this. You know, it happened yeah. also... Yeah, La, if you remember the last operation in Gaza, not this war, the one, the last one, you know, when they, they, they ask also the surgeon, the religious, the clergy, they ask him, you know, he said, I have in the box, said, what do you have in the box for us? I have tzitzit, who, he didn't force them to put tzitzit, ask whoever wants, that was Golani, the Golani, the soldier of Golani, everybody come and ask tzitzit, and then the last soldier, the last soldier did not have tzitzit. I mean, it was, the box was empty. And then the, the clergy, the clergy, the surgeon, the clergy, he took out his tzitzit himself, his own tzitzit, and gave it to the soldier. He gave it to the soldier. The soldier said, what about you? He said, don't worry. I'm not in the front line. You are in the front line. You need protection. And he gave him this good unit, by the way, after the... You know, the war after the operation, not even one got killed. It was amazing. And Nes, Nes Mishamayim. Vekoveh Adonai, but the people hope in Hashem, Yahalifu Koah. They switched, they, you know, they got the strength, they renew their strength. Now, Yahalu Ever Kanesharim, exactly like the eagles, as I told you. The eagles know how to renew the strength in his body. And that's why right now, the strength, you know what the people know in the front line, what they said to the chief of staff, what they said to minister of defense, you know what they said? Whoever, like in my age, if you remember Six Day War, it was, I said to my wife, exactly like 67. We were three weeks waiting for a war. The soldier asking when we want to go in to Gaza. We want to go in. Just give us the sign to go in. They're ready. He said, we are ready to go. Just waiting for the sign. Move. Move is a code to start. But people want to go in. Yarutsu veloi gau. They're running. Yesterday I heard one of the soldiers that he was fighting, fighting, fighting. And none stopped for 72 hours. I would like to share with you personal story. Why I say personal is not my own personal. It's Am Israel. But because my son is the principal of Flatbush. Now, principal of Flatbush, my son told me something I don't know myself. 
It was not a newspaper. It was two settlements in Gaza, one religious, one not religious, and the, the terrorists, the Hamas, came first to the, it's called Shlomit. The name of the settlement is Shlomit. And the people, the group that they already, you said, called Kitat Konenut, every settlement you have 10, 20 soldiers, they're ready just in case for emergency. They mobilize immediately all the groups they are, you know, they are on standby. And they were fighting with the terrorists and they killed all, I mean, they, they ran away. They ran away from the Kitat. So Shlomit, this Shlomit, the settlement, you know, is not, uh, was not damaged at all. But now listen, the terrorists went to the settlement next to it, next door. They're not religious, you know. And now they ask him, do you have any connection to the other settlement? He said, we say, can you ask the one? Somebody is talking to his microphone. Wait, somebody has the microphone on, please. So listen, it's an amazing story. He said, you know, they said, and then they may, I, I then my son could send me in Arut Sheva. They publicized this and they mobilized. said, the only one we, we have connection to this Moshav, to this settlement is Purim. We go on and Purim. And we, you know, we, we read the Megillah for them and we dance with them. Only Purim. Even Yom Kippur, they don't have connection. Only on Purim. That's all. There is no connection or friendship. But this time when they saw terrorists going to the settlement next door, they run after them. Ten. Ten Israeli soldiers. Now, four of them got killed. Four of them got wound, wounded, you know, injured. And two of them got you know, healthy, please, peace. Now, how do I know the story? Because Flatbush Yeshiva trying to mobilize money to, you know, donate, to make fundraise. The four widows, they went to the four widows and they asked him, what do you need? And the four widows said, we have no car. You know, we are, we cannot move. So we need immediately to, you know, cars. So now Flatbush Yeshiva trying from the Halabim of, uh, of Flatbush, they're trying, you know, my son trying to fund, to raise money for this, for widows. And he called me and I called my dealer to give me good price for four cars. I just sent the offer to them. But he said, I didn't know about this Shlomit. How he said, and now this, the big officer said, for how long you were fighting? He said, 72 hours. 72 hours. That means they didn't sleep. They were fighting for three days in a row. Two days or three days. 72 hours. It's amazing. Said, Yarutsu veloyigau. They running, fighting, and they not, they didn't get tired. Yelchu veloyafu. They walk and they not tired. And that's Nes Mishamayim. Mamash Nes Mishamayim. One of the officers, I heard him yesterday, he said when they gave him, you know, the weapons, the rifle, the, you know, the, you know, whatever it is, Kalachnikov or M16, when they gave them, you know, when you get a rifle in the army, you have to clean it up to make sure you don't get stuck. But they gave them without cleaning the weapons. They didn't have even time to, we said, wow, what if it jammed? What happened if it's jammed? You know, we said, the officer said, I didn't, I didn't know if it's working or not working. I didn't have time to check the rifle, the, the M16. And then when they start to fight, he said, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. My weapons is working, working nonstop, beautifully. And he's working, working, working. Now, after they finished the operation, killed all the terrorists, he's going back, you know, the Nashakia, the people in the base, you know, to clean up, say, and they check the weapons, guess what? The weapons is broken. He said, my gosh, this is Ness above the nature. When they said, he said, and then another soldier, the same thing. They bring all the weapons to the Nashakia. Nashika is place that you clean up all the weapons. And they found out all the weapons, not, not good. They not said it's broken. And all of them used the weapons beautifully, like machine gun. Tell me, this is not a Ness? He said, Ness mi shamayim. Hashem is with us. Hashem is with us. Mamash Nes. So now the end of the Aftarah, Yeshayahu said, Listen to me. Keep silence. 
החרישו, אליי, איים ולאומים, all the nations, יחליפי כוח, now all the nations, many, you know, Syria, you know, Hezbollah, Iran, יקשו אז ידבר יחדיו למשפט נקרא בה, you know, all the nations trying to get together against Israel, big nations, the access of evil, do you remember this sentence, statement? Access of evil, you know, remember George Bush? In 2002, when he said access of evil, he said the access of evil, they tried to get together, to stick together against Israel. Look at the second pasuk. Do you remember in Parashat Lech Lecha what happened? Do you remember what happened in Parashat Lech Lecha? What happened to Lot? Huh? What happened to Lot? Yeah, he was kept. By whom? By the four kings. By, by, by four kings. The four kings were fighting against five kings and they were the most powerful nations in the world. And now they told Abraham, your nephew was captured. <laughs> he said, I mean, normal men, what do you say? What do you would say? What can I do? I mean, what can I do? Just for your illustration, just think that you have America, Russia, North Korea and China together. He said, what can I do? You know what Abraham says? Look what is educated. The first one in the Torah, the first one in the Torah that been got the title educator, Mechanech, educator, is Abraham Avinu. Now, do you remember who left whom? Lot left Abraham or Abraham left Lot? Lot left Abraham. Le and where did he go? Stop. He went, my dear friend, he went from the best place in the world to be next to Abraham to the worst place in the world. Now, what usually, if somebody running away from the yeshiva and he became a picores, he's an anti-religious, anti-Torah, and he was caught, you know what people would say? He deserved it. You know what Abraham said to his student? Lot is part of us. Let's save him. That's Vayarak et Hanichav Yelideh Beto. He got all his soldiers. Last week I spoke to you about this, if you remember. And he got, do you remember how many soldiers? Martha, do you remember? Eliezer. No, but how many? Before Eliezer. Eliezer yeah. is Rashi. You jump to Rashi. Yeah, but he said 318. You know what he said? Despair in Hebrew? 317. <laughs> <laughs> despair, despair in Hebrew, he said Yehush. Yehush, Yud Alev Vav Shin. Put it down in your machberet, in your notebook. Yud Alev Vav Shin. Yud Alev is Yehush. Reb Nachman Mibreslev said Yehush is one of the worst value that we might have. No Yehush. Yehush is 317. And what is the gematary of Eliezer, you said? It's 318. Rashi said not really 318. It's only Eliezer. And you know who was who won in the war? Very hard. It should sound like a movie. But Abraham defeated all the kings. He said, look, so look, Yeshayahu asked, Who was came from the east? What is the east? Is Aram Naharaim, Iraq, where Abraham was. Tzedek, who brought the justice? Who is this guy from the east? He was fighting against all the kings, all the power of the world, and he defeated them in one minute. Who is this one? Look at Rashi. Who came from the east? Who was walking up from the east? Why Hashem chose Abraham as the first Jewish man? You know what he said? Because I know you like justice. Justice, you know how to say justice in Hebrew? Tzedek. 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 Now righteous man, we say Tzedek. So Abraham at Tzedek was, you know, pursuing Tzedek. And me iret Abraham, look Rashi said, you know who is this Tzedek? Me iret Abraham. Who brought, who woke up Abraham? Aram To bring him from Iraq, from Aram Naharaim, which is on the east side. Shehu Mizrah. What IDF trying to do now? You know what they're trying to do to the world? Not to Israel, to the world, to the entire universe. Tzedek, justice. My dear friend, just two minutes before I gave this show, I saw some clips coming, you know, 
now many video, but you know, we have Dover Tzal. Dover Tzal is the spokesman of IDF. He is the most reliable person by information. And he did not show the entire video. They were allowed, he was allowed to show only one minute from the video. How they, they investigated the terrorists. Did you see this video already? He said, you will see it in a few minutes. It's going to be all over the world. And he asked the terrorists, what commandment you got? What they told you to do? You know what they said? Whoever, whatever we see to destroy. Not only to destroy, to torture them first and then to kill them. To chop their heads. To cut off their legs. And whatever it is, you know, to cut off. He said, that's the order they got. And he showed, it's one minute video. And it's going now all over the world. And it said, it's nothing what we revealed every day. Every day, more and more information. He said, then, Mishiru, so that's Abraham Avinu. When he saw what the four kings did, he did not, hey, he was connected to Hashem and he went to fight. He went to fight and he defeated them. That's Abraham. So when he said, the one who came from the east is Abraham Avinu. I'll tell you why I'm telling you about Abraham in two minutes. Look what he says here. Natan et Harbo, Abraham took the sword, the Ose Halalim Rabim. He destroyed many, many, like we destroyed the terrorists, many, many te enemies of the enemies got killed on the ground. And that's what he says. They were falling apart like a straw on the ground. Now, why I'm telling you this, why I connect Abraham to IDF, I think Abraham was the first chief of staff of the IDF. Why? Like, do you remember the statement we learned many, many times? Maase avot siman lebanim. Maase avot siman lebanim. You know, we usually we translate this. The history repeats itself. But Ramban said that's not correct. It's correct, but not that's not the whole truth. And I would like to explain to you what is maase avot siman lebanim. What our forefathers did is a sign for our children. That means what Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov did is for us. What does that mean? I would like, do you remember a woman that she lost seven of her children? Who is this lady? Hannah. Hannah. Do you remember how many children, you know, the, the, the Caesar killed? All of them. But, but when he came to the youngest one, do you remember what Hannah asked from him? To talk to uh, Isaac, Abraham. No, uh, but you, no, you no, no she asked Christ. from the Caesar. She asked yeah. from the Caesar, she said, kill me first. Kill me yeah. first before my son. And he said, no, 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 in your Torah, you're not allowed to kill the mother and the baby. It says, he gave her a pasuk. That we're not allowed to take the mother and the son into slaughter about animals the same day. He said, you are wicked, wicked person. You talking, did you fulfill all the Torah? That's the only pasuk you quote for me? And then, come on, you know, you, you know what happened with the youngest one. But before he killed the youngest one, she said to her youngest one, listen what she said to him. My dear children, she didn't say my dear son. She spoke to him, to whom? To all her children. But six of them got killed already. So to whom she's talking? She's mm -hmm. talking to their souls, to their neshamot. He said, my dear children, when you go up, you will see Abraham Avinu. You know what you should tell Abraham Avinu? He said, Abraham, you had one test to take your son to be killed. I have seven. Now, we should listen to the second statement. Your test was just a test, but the end of the story was happy end. My test was action. That means your son eventually was alive. I lost my seven children. So what Hannah is trying to tell Abraham? How does it sound? Do you remember? the force to, to be able to... But to how is it sound on the simple text? Is it sound uh, like seven. arrogant? You know, like she said to Abraham, I'm better than you. I, I, I gave my seven children to one. Uh, so that means what? Like I'm better than you. 
but Hannah is a tzaddeket. How could she say to Abraham, I have seven, I gave up seven children, and he did not even give up one. Even though it was a test, but you have only one. But yours is a test. Mine is not a test, it's action. But listen what she said to Abraham. Has shalom. She said, go to Abraham Avinu and tell him, thank him very, very much. He said, you know, can you show me one Jewish mother that she can see all her seven children being executed and she cooperate with them? It's mm -hmm. unnormal. It's unnormal. It's not normal. Do you remember who I brought, which lady I brought to Panama? Yeah, Miriam Perez. I was thinking of her now that you were talking about You were thinking. Her. Do you oh, remember? Yes, yes. Do you remember? Do you remember what, uh, how many children she lost? Two. Two. Listen to the story I listened today. 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 You will see it very soon. Arab Shmuel, he's a rabbi. I don't know him personally. I just heard it in his interview. He lost now his two children. He has... He has five, two, seven sons and one daughter. Okay? Now listen, two of them were in the home in Shabbat in Simchat Torah. When they heard what happened, they put the uniform on them, took the rifles and went straight to the battle to, the, to fight against terrorists. You know what happened? Both of them got killed. Both of them got killed. Now they were sitting Shiva. He's sitting Shiva. He got up yesterday from Shiva. And what the other three brothers doing? The three brothers going in the army. He himself went to the army. He's in the Zaka. You know what is Zaka? He has to identify dead body. You know, he said he went to the army. He just finished the Shiva. Now, and his daughter is a nurse in the hospital in Be'er Sheva. And I don't know, I don't know about them. I'm thinking about the mother in the house. Lost two children, three in the army, three in the army, and one daughter in the hospital and her husband in the army. This is crazy. This is not realistic. He said, no, he asked him, the, the people, the broadcaster, ask him, how could you do it? He said, I mean, we have no time to ask questions now. We have to fight. We have to fight. But he said, what was the peak of your story? Listen to this. You know Miriam Peret. Now his son was in the boundary over there. And he met the son of Miriam Peret. And the son of Miriam Peret is also lost to two brothers. And he's in the army now. Wow. And now this guy lost his two brothers and he's in the army. And all of them were hugging and kissing each other. You know, it's, it's such a story, it's unbelievable that, you know, to see, look what is IDF, look what is a Jewish nation. This is not normal, my dear friend, my, not normal. It's unrealistic. But that's a fact, that's a fact. You know, I can send you the, I took the name of the rabbi, I forgot his last name because I would like to go to YouTube to find it and I'll send it to you. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's a story that I have heard today. Today. So that's what he said now, Abraham, so Hannah said to, to, to Abraham, not I'm better than you. I got the energy, the power, the braveness, the heroism from you because of your Akedah. When you did the Akedah, you empowered me. That's what she did to him. He said, thank you, Abraham Avinu. Now you understand what is Ma'ase Avot Siman Lebanim? Ma'aseh Avot Siman Lebanim is when Abraham Avinu were fighting against the four kings. He empowered the IDF today to fight. He empowered them. When Yitzhak discovered the water under the ground, he empowered Israel to, to make the water of the Mediterranean Sea, you know, sweet and good for drinking. Nobody in the world can take water from the sea, from the ocean, and make it, you know, to drink. But that's the power of Yitzhak. So everybody, so Abraham Avinu, he is the power. He is really, that's to say, Baruch Atah Hashem, Magen Avraham. Magen Avraham, the shield, protect. When we say Shmonasre, Magen Avraham, do you remember what is the IDF in Hebrew? Tzahal. Tzahal is abbreviation. You know the three words? Tzadik is Tzva, Tzva army. 
ה' זה הגנה, defend, כן? למד זה לישראל, צבא הגנה לישראל, the defense army of Israel. The word defense, I don't know who made this word, but there is a connection, מגן אברהם, הגנה, defensive. Abraham did not, would not attack the four kings if they, they would not do what they did. Probably they massacred many prisoners. Maybe they did what the Hamas did. You know, that's exactly. So now Tzal, he is the access of goodness. And Tzal is fighting, you know, the time that George Bush said he was talking about Iran and Iraq and North Korea. And now we're talking the access of evil is Iran, Syria, Hezbollah and Hamas. And that's why when we go and we will win. We will win. Be'ezrat Hashem, we will win. There is no question about it. And we will destroy the evenness, the ra, the evenness from the, at least from the Middle East. I hope Iran will learn good lesson and will be, behave a little bit better. Who knows? Halabai that Hashem will take them away too. Now I'm going to the parasha. Until now, it's haftarah. Perfect haftarah. But now you think the parasha is less? No. You know, Ahara devarim ha'ele. After those things. Hayat var Hashem el Avram. Avram is still Avram, not Avraham. You see, Avram. Hashem said, had words to Avram. Bamahaze. What is mahaze? Vision. In the vision. Lemor, saying, Altira Avraham. Don't be afraid, Avraham. If I'm telling you don't be afraid, that means what? that you are afraid. So he said, we have to ask the question, why Abraham was afraid? We'll see in a minute. He said, Altir Abraham, do not be afraid. Anochi, I am, what is the next word? And Pasuk Aleph? Magen. Do you remember Tzva Gana Israel? Magen Abraham. Anochi Magen Lach, I am your shield. Do you remember what the arrow of the Egyptian, where did they go? To the pillar of fire, to Hashem. Anochi, with my own body. When I said body to Hashem, you know it's ridiculous. Hashem has no body. But Hashem has many ways to protect us. Like the pillar of fire, Amud Ha'esh. Anochi magen lach. Secharcha arbe me'od. You have a big reward. I didn't give you even your reward yet. Abraham thought, you know what Abraham thought? That Hashem gave him his reward already for all his mitzvot. Where Hashem gave him the rewards? When he defeated the four kings. If you defeat the only one with Eliezer, the four kings, Hashem was with you. There is no question about it. So Abraham was afraid that, you know, all the credit that he has, all the merit, all the mitzvot, gone. Hashem paid him already. Hashem said, don't worry, Abraham, don't be afraid. You have a lot of reward. Don't worry. Vayomer Abraham, okay, Hashem said, okay, you give me reward. I have another question for you. Vayomer Abraham, Hashem Elohim, he said, Mati Tendi, what are you giving me, Scharcha, money? What is it? Vanochi Olech Ariri. You know what is Olech Ariri? Ariri is ch childless. Alich Ariri, I have no children. You're giving me money, 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 I'm multimillionaire, Abraham was. What is the money? When Meshach beti Udamesek Eliezer, where is the money is going? To Eliezer? You know where is Eliezer from? From Syria. So all my money will go to Damascus? He said, what, 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 what do I need? What is this money? It's worthless. In another word, what Abraham is asking? Oh, now listen. He said, now clear. Pasu Gimel. Vayomer Avraham hen li lo natata zera. You didn't give me offspring. My household, your Eshoti is inheriting me. That means Eliezer. That means if I'll die, Eliezer will inherit me? It's worthless. Hashem has words to Abraham. Listen. This one will not go to inherit you. Not Eliezer and not Ishmael. You know who's going to inherit you? Ki imasher yetze mi me'echa. You know what is yetze mi me'echa? Your offspring from you. The one who will come. Hu yirashecha. He is going to inherit you. Abraham is not 25 years old. 
Abraham is very old and he has no children. Hashem said, don't worry, you will have a baby. But to prove to him that he is, you know, Hashem wants to prove to him. He took him outside. Do you remember, Martha, where is outside? Up, up above the stars. Ah, above the shamayim, above the sky. Do you remember how Rashi knows he's above? Because he said, look down. Uh, how, do you remember the Hebrew word? Look the Hebrew word. Vayomer habet na shamayma. Habet is not just look, is look down. If Hashem said to him, look down, that means he's above the shamayim. Look to the shamayim. Uspora kochavim and count the stars. Im tuchal isporotam, vayomer lo ko yezaraycha. Could you count the stars? No, it's countless. Your son going, your nation will be countless. That's why, by the way, we're not allowed to count Jews. He said, your count is be countless. Ko yezaraycha. You don't said your zera will be ko. Do you remember the word ko? The word ko when Abraham went to the Akedah and that the Eliezer and Ishmael wanted to come to go up with him. He said, no, 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 you stay here. Your mama said, the woman can. Vaniva Naar, he said, Shvu lachem po imahamor. You sit here with a donkey. Vaniva Naar, and I am in Yitzhak. Ken? Nelecha ad ko. Ko. Venishtahavev and ashuva alechem. What is ko? Because Hashem promised to me, ko yezaraycha. And I'm going to check if I'm going to kill Yitzhak, who is going to be my offspring. There is something that Hashem knows and I don't know. I'm going to clarify the misunderstanding. Something that I misunderstand Hashem. How is it possible if Yitzhak will die and I will have countless children? Now tell me now, normal men would believe to God if I should God say to him like this? You know, you're going to be skeptic. It's, it's, it's a dream. It's real. How is it possible? The man is very, very old. He's 99 years old. You know, it says, Ve'emin Bashem. Ve'emin Bashem. You know what he says, Amin? And he believe in God. The first one in the Torah that says believer is Abraham Avinu. Abraham Avinu believe in God. And Hashem considered it to him as a mitzvah. Because he believed in God. You know, Hashem said he doesn't take it for granted. That's a mitzvah. Now he said to him, keep in mind that Abraham is the first Jewish man. Ani Adonai, asher otsotiha meur kazdim latet lacha et aaretz azot lerishta. I am Hashem who took you out from the Ur Kazdim. You know what was the Ur Kazdim? Do you remember what was the Ur Kazdim? Who he wanted to kill Abraham from Ur Kazdim? Where? Hashem saved Abraham from Ur Kazdim. Who wanted to kill him in Ur Kazdim? You know what is Ur? Ur. Ur is fire. Ur is not Or. Or is light. Ur is fire. Who had control? Who was the strongest one in the Middle East then? Nimrod. 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 Very good. And Nimrod, and you know who told Nimrod about Abraham? That he's trying to publicize Hashem? You know who told the Nimrod? Terah. The father. the father said to Nimrod, you know, my son is doing woes. And every lecture, more and more people listening to him. He brought to Abraham and he said to Abraham, who is your God? He said, my God is the God, the one who created the world. He said, yes. Can he save you? He said, okay, I'll put you in the furnace. I'll put you in the furnace. If your God is God, you know, his uncle was with him. He said, Haran. You know Haran? He asked Haran, who are you? Are you with Abraham or with me? You know what Haran said to him? He was undecided. What? He was undecided. Ah, but what he said, he said, if Abraham will win, I am with Abraham. If Nimrod will win, I will be with Nimrod. So now Abraham went to the fire, and Hashem took you out of the fire even without smoke, without smell of smoke. So Nimrod got scared to death, and he said to Haran, are you, I said, with you, I said, with Abraham. He put Haran in the fire, and he was consumed by one minute by the fire. You know, Haran. But don't be upset with Haran. You know who is in Haran in, in the world today? Many of us. 
Many of us waiting, you know, we say Hashem Bashamayim only when we are lucky, when we win. But when we lose, no Hashem. Hasve Shalom, Hasve Shalom. So Haran is a concept. Many people say, you know, they said, you know, going with Hashem only when they are winning. Hasve Shalom. But look, tell me now which Pasuk is it remind you? Hashem Pasuk Zain. Ani Hashem. I am Hashem. Which took you out of Meur Kasdim. I took you out from Ur Kasdim. Is it remind you another Pasuk in the Torah? I took you out from Egypt. From Egypt. So what, which Pasuk is this? Which Pasuk is this? I mean, the, the first man, 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 they said, no? Well, no, what is it? What is it says? What is it? The first. The first, the first commandment. The first commandment. But look, in but the first commandment is the same style. But here, Hashem, Abraham is private. He's the only Jewish man in the world now. So he said, Ani Hashem asher I took you out from Urkis Dim. But I'm going to tell you, Ma'ase Avot Siman Lebanim. One day your children will be in Egypt. And I'll give you the Ten Commandments. And then he said, the commandment, Mamash, the same Pasuk. Anochi Hashem Elokecha asher otseticha me'eretz Mitzrayim. But here, we have happy end, even more than this. Latet Lecha, I took you out of Urkis Dim to give you to give you this land as inheritance. So what Hashem, what Hashem is telling Abraham, I promised you what? Eretz Israel. Now he said, now first, two promises we have here. One promise is offspring, children, and the other bracha, what? Eretz Israel. My dear friend, you know what is this? We call this one? That's the Brit Ben Abtarim. That's the promise that Hashem promised to us. He promised to us the Jewish nation is countless and everlasting. Netzach Israel and Eretz Israel belong to the Jews. Not to no one in the world. Only to the children of Abraham and Sarah, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Why said Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, not Abraham? Because the son of Abraham is Ishmael. Ishmael said, I need the you know, Eretz Israel too. So Hashem said, Yitzhak will inherit Abraham. And Yitzhak is Esav. He said, Yaakov will inherit Yitzhak. So Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Eretz Israel. Now, what do you think? Abraham believe Hashem or not? Yes. Believe. I have a surprise for you. Just one pasuk, what we call Abraham, the great believer. Nachon? When Hashem told him about the children, he said, Amen. Amen. Now, look at the next pasuk. Vayomar Hashem Elokim. Abraham said, Hashem Elokim. Bameda ki irashena. How do I know? You know in another word where he said to Hashem, prove it to me. Wait, wait a minute. Just two seconds ago, what the Torah I mean, Hashem considered it a tzedakah, it says believe in Hashem. So Abraham believed or did not believe? You ask Hashem a proof? He said, Bameda ki irashena. How do I know that I'm going to inherit Wow, it sounded so good. He for the future. He wanted, like, for the future. What he wanted? I think it was, he wanted to make a statement for the future, so the future generations know. Ken, you're right. Rashi said he's talking about the future, but what, what, what do you mean when he said about the future? Explain more what you mean. I mean that Abraham wanted, like, for God to say it very clearly so the all the generations will know clearly that God told him that he will inherit the land. Okay, good. What you said, you said exactly, well, not exactly, we add one, you know, one more piece to your information. He said, what if my children will not follow Torah and mitzvot? Are you going to take care of Israel from us? But that's what, oh. you went to the angle. I'm going to the different one today, and you will see. So Hashem that's said, true. ah, you're asking? Okay. It is strong. And Hashem said to Abraham, Kali, I want you to bring Egla Mishuleshet. You know what is Egel? Calf. Three calves. Ve'ez Mishuleshet. And three goats. Ve'ail Mishulash. And three rams. Okay? But more Ve'tor Ve'gozal. What is Tor? You know what is Tor? It's a dove. 
כן? The old dove and gozal is the chick. אוקיי? Okay? ויקח לו את כל אלה, אז אברהם took all of them, ויוותר אותם בתווך, and he split them to, to pieces, one to right, one to the left. ויתן איש ביטרו לקראת רעיון, הוא יגיד one piece parallel to the other piece, and there is a path between. But one animal he did not split. Which animal he did not split? The bird. The bird. ואת הציפור לא בתר. מה, keep in mind, my dear friends, we are in a vision now. This is a vision that Abraham sees very clear. He sees three calves, three rams, you know, and three goats, and he split them, and he said now, and the ציפור, the bird, לא בתר, he did not split, he did not cut off to two pieces. וירד העית, העית is a big bird, you know, that eating the other birds. על הפגרים, the birds came to the pieces that he cut off to eat. And you know who protect them? By Yashav Otam Avraham. And Avraham was really protecting them. Look, Avraham is not only the father of the Jews, he is the father of the nations as well. So he protected. ויהי השמש לבוא, ותרדמה נפלה על אברהם. And he said, when is this? השמש לבוא, what is שמש לבוא? Sundown. When you go sundown, ותרדמה. Do you know before you make a surgery, what shot you get before the surgery? The doctor giving a shot. What, what do you call to this shot? Anesthesia. Anesthesia. Exactly. Anesthesia. Vetardema. He gave him a tardema nafla, like Adam and Chava. When he did, you know, when Adam was falling asleep, it was big anesthesia that he didn't feel the pain. Now, when you sleep and you are in the night, you know, look how he described the night. Emma is fear, is frightening. Big darkness. Do you know when we have big darkness? In the ten plagues. It was V'yamesh Hoshech. The darkness was, you can touch it. Nofelet Alav. Now, when you have big darkness, can you see? No. But Abraham sees very clear. You see what he said? He put him in the darkness, but Hashem in the vision show him very clear. All the three calves and all the three and the splitting and the bird, everything is clear. Vayomer Abraham, And he said to Abraham, you ask me a big question. You know what the question you ask me? Bame eda. How do I know? that this country belongs to me. You know what Hashem said to him? Yadoa teda. We say it in the Haggadah, if you remember. You ask me one piece of information, I'll give you two pieces of information. Double knowledge. Yadoa teda. And we'll see later on, what is Yadoa teda? Ki geri yezarach haberetz lo lahem, ba'avadu ve'inu motam. I'm giving you another future. Your children will be stranger, will be slaves. And they will torch them, you know, for 400 years. Don't forget the people who is going to enslave them. I'm going to judge them also. They will be punished as well. And after the redemption, the re- after the slavery, they will have big redemption. And they will go out with big property, big money. All the property of the Egyptian, you know, we were very rich in Yitziat Mitzrayim. ואתה תבוא אל אבותיך בשלום, and you will come to your fathers, בשלום תיקבר בשיבה טובה, you will be buried. But don't expect this to do now. Why? ודור רביעי ישובו הנה. It's going to be fourth generation from today. דור רביעי. כי לא שלם עוון האמורי עד הנה. Now you know who is in Eretz Israel now? האמורי. But אמורי, when Hashem punish the goyim, He doesn't punish them for nothing. Only when they are really, you know, fulfill themselves with a lot of sins. You know, he said, Shilo Shalem. I'm telling you now, they're going to make sins, sins, sins. And fourth generation is going to be up to my head. And then I'm going to kick them out. And then you're going to inherit Eretz Israel. Now tell me now. Do you remember last week in the Shur? When the Hamas, what they did in Simchat Torah. You think their, their sins are, are fulfilled or not yet? There is no question what they did is Shalem Avona Emori. 
There is no question what they did is up to here. That's what Hashem said. Cats called Basar Kalefana in Parashat Noah. That's the end of it. I cannot take it anymore. I have to punish the people, the Hamas. And that's the point of now. When the sun went down and she saw the torture with the fire between the pieces. That day, it's called Brit Ben Abetarim. Remember, that's covenant. What is Ben Abetarim? Between the pieces. Do you know when we mentioned this in the Agada? You know it by heart, but I don't know if you know the meaning. In the beginning. Do you remember when we raise up the cup and we're singing? Yes. What is Ve'ishamda? Bechol dor vador omdim alenu lechalotenu. The promise. The enemies are going to come generation generation, but the Jewish people will survive. Nachon. So what we mention to Hashem, Ve'hi. What is He? The bread ben Amtarim, this covenant. This bread ben Amtarim, you promised to us. He said, "Vehi shehamda, the promise that you promised to Abraham Avinu, that's what's standing for us and protecting us." You see why this parasha is now? This parasha is now when we had a big, we have a big fight, big war against Hamas. He said, "Don't worry, Hashem promised to us, Netzach Israel Oishaker. Hashem promised, and Abraham Maase Avot Siman Lebanim." Rashi says here. Al-Tirah is explained to you that Abraham was really afraid that, you know, that, uh, that Hashem already gave him all the merits. And Hashem said, don't worry. Midrash Rabbah said the same thing. Now, Midrash Rabbah in Parashat Bereshit said he was afraid. Listen to this. It's, it remind me another king. Maybe you would remember. Anochim again lach, I'm your shield. I'll protect you. I'm lying, you know, said 7B in red. Amar lefishaya avinu Avraham mitpahed. Our father Avraham was afraid. Va'amar tomar otan uchlusin sh'arakti sh'aya ba'em tzadik echad v'yeresh shamayim echad. Maybe when I killed the people over there, maybe I killed one who was innocent. You know what Avraham was afraid? That he killed one, one terrorist that he was innocent. Okay? And that's why he was afraid. Do you remember another one was afraid? Like this? David Amelech. When David Amelech, Hashem said, you're not going to build up the Bet HaMikdash. David Amelech said, maybe I killed in my wars somebody who was innocent. Hashem said, he did not kill even one person who was innocent. Don't worry. It's not because of this. You are acquitted with the wars. But because something else, you know, there is another reason why Shlomo Melech should build up the Beta Mikdash. That's what Hashem said to Abraham. But here there is a beautiful metaphor. Look the beautiful. Omer Mashal, a metaphor, a fable. to one aya over Alifnepar the social Melech. He was in front of the orchard of the king. Ra'ah Havilashel Kotim. He saw bundle of thorns. Ve'arad on Talab. He said he won, he removed the thorns. He cleaned up the, thorn, the thorns. He was impressed, the king. He needed many employees, many workers to remove the thorns. And you did it by your own. You really removed all the thorns. And he said, I will give you a big reward. What is the nimshal? Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Avraham, you saw, listen to this, my dear friend, it's amazing how this is said. Uchlosin Sharakta, you know, you know who is these thorns today, in our world today, in Simhat Torah? The thorns of Hamas Nikim, the terrorist. And Hashem said to Avraham, to IDF, He said to the children of Avraham, you are removing, you know, all the thorns, all the dirts from the universe, and you doing a big mitzvah, Mechiat Amalek, and I will give you big rewards on this. That means after we will defeat them, and after we will destroy them, Hashem will give us a reward. Not only will help us, 
he will give us a reward. I know, I hope, I pray. You know what the reward will be? I hope, I pray. What? Yeah. Mashiach. Mashiach. <laughs> Good, we have the same mind. You see, after so many years, we're thinking about the same thing. He said, you know, he said, that's what he said. But Hashem promised, you are cleaning up the thorns from the ground. And you're not waiting for, uh, for, for America or any other power to help you, you know, to be. By the way, America tried to help with, with uh, not only with weapons. They said, you know, even the army. They said, IDF, you know, they said, you know, we can handle it. Now we don't need help. I hope we'll not come to a point that Iran will start and maybe then we will need their help. I don't know. But right now, we had in six-day war, we have many front line, many people, and Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, we handle it by our own. But of course, we need America for the weapons. Without the weapons of America, we will not be, you know, we're not Abraham Avinu yet, but Ezrat Hashem, Hashem will help us. Now, do you remember I said how Abraham had the guts to say to Hashem, how do I know? Prove it to me that I'm going to inherit Teres Israel. Now, uh, who said before? Rene? You said before, somebody said before what yeah. Rashi said. But listen to Radak, it's amazing. I don't know how many people you had time to, to be with Goim and to answer the question, but to me it happened when I was in university and a priest asked me, you know, I said, Explain to me, I'm not talking anti-Semite. I mean, there are many priests that are pro-Israel. You know, they ask him, explain to me how the Jewish people still exist. No explanation, it's a miracle. Oh, uh, what, you, what will you answer? It's no explanation, it's a miracle. <laughs> not miracle, it's above nature. Nachon? It's above. Now, another question. How is it possible that you were 2,000 years out of Israel and Hashem kept Eretz Israel to you? Nobody, you know, Mark Twain wrote description on Eretz Israel before, before, many, many years ago. In the Bible, it says milk and honey. And he said, what do you come in? It's no milk and honey, it's thorns. It's a dry land. He was talking, you look at Google. And Mark Twain, he described Eretz Israel as a desert. It's not milk and honey. And it's his right. He gave a fact. But you know, Eretz Israel was waiting for whom? For the Jews to come back. Look what a miracle. Not only we came back to Eretz Israel. Tell me how many Christians you had in Jerusalem before 1948. How many Arabs you had in Jerusalem before 1948. You know, I tell you how many? Almost zero. I mean, there were few. But nothing. When the people start to come to Eretz Israel, when the Jews came to Eretz Israel. Now we go to Jerusalem, you will see the Muslims, you see the Islam, you see the Christianity, you will see all the religion. But what is the main city of the Christian? What is the holy city? Berlin. Vatican. Not Berlin. No, Vatican. Berlin. The capital, yes, Rome. Nachon? The, how many Jews are going to pray in Rome? How many Arabs are going to pray in Rome? No, only Christian. Now, what is the, the holy city of the Islam? Mecca. Mecca. How many Jews are going to Mecca to pray? Zero. How many Christians are going to Mecca? Zero. So that means Mecca and Rome and the Vatican, is, that's only for Christians and Muslims. But Jerusalem, who is in Jerusalem? The whole world. Everybody wants Jerusalem. Did you ever think about this? This is amazing. There is no rational. So you know what Abraham asked Hashem? He said, look, he said, when you told me about the children, you know what you did to prove it? It said you took me for a journey. You put me, you give me anesthesia. And to see Netzach Israel, to see the Jewish people, you took me out of the world. You took me above the Shamaim. So to understand the rationale, is nature or above nature? It's above nature. So you took me out of the Shamaim and you show me. So now what I like now about Eretz Israel, Eretz Israel is also not rational. It's above nature. So take me out of the nature to show me. 
But he said, Bame he said, how do I know that Eretz Israel? Don't try to explain to me because it's no rational. I want to see it, the same journey you did with me for the, my offspring. Give me another journey. He said, ah, you want another journey? So I'll show you the other journey. And he put him on sleep and he said, by yourself to Hutza, look Rashi. And he took him out. And he said, what he took him out? Took him out above the Shamaim. Above the Shamaim, you cannot understand Eretz Israel if you're above nature, if not above nature. By nature, Eretz Israel is kaput. It's not, doesn't belong to the Jews. It's long, many 2,000 years the Jews were not there. Let's take Italy, take France. Okay, take America, take Panama. Let the Panamanian go out for, two, for not 2,000 years, 200 years out of Panama. You think Panama will be Panamanian? I guarantee you no. 2,000 years we left Eretz Israel and Eretz Israel still belong to us. And that's what he said, Hashem, please give me another journey. <laughs> said, you want a journey? Okay, let's take. He gave him a jumbo, 707. It took him above the Shamaim. And he saw the stars. And that's why he said Bameda. Bameda, he wanted to be above the Shamaim. Otherwise, you cannot say. Now, let's go to the other part. Who is, do you remember what animals we had? We had rams, we had goats. Nachon? We said cows. Okay. Said so we have three. Now, I said, who are the cow? Who are the calves? Who are the goats? Who are the rams? How could, if I tell you to divide to the all animals in this vision to two groups, how would you divide them? Am Israel and the rest of the world? And, no, you're telling me already the nimshal. You know, I'm not asking the nimshal. I said, let's say it's still in the metaphor. But you said, take the rams, take the goats, can, take, you know, take the calves, and take the bird, okay? And now you divide them to two categories. How would you divide them? From the earth and from the sky. Ah, okay, you say. I'll tell you, I mean, if you said, you know, said, who is the strong animal here? Ah, the one from the earth. <laughs> no. I said, oh, the, keep in mind, you know, that this, the calf and the goat, okay, and the, and the rams, they have how many feet they have? Or four. four. That means you stand strong on the ground. You know, how many feet the dove has? Two. Two. I cannot even say feet. It's like a vein. It's nothing. So he said, you know, you know what is the four, these, these three animals? It's the power of the world, the three powers of the world. They are, you know, we said today, who are the three powers in the world? You can say America, Russia, and maybe China. China. Huh? China. China. Okay, let's say for instance, you know, say they are like the cow on four legs. They are grounded, strong on the ground. And you know who is the bird? Eretz is the Jewish nation. Why Hashem took the bird and make it the Jewish nation? You know why? The Jewish, the bird has no feet. But you know what the bird has and the, power, and the animals do not have? Wings. Wings. You know what the Jewish people are doing all their life? They flying from country to country. And you know, every country they go and they're trying to destroy them, but they're moving. It's a mobile society. And he said, look what he says. Va'ayla sheraita, ken? Ba'alea karnaim. You know, the isle, the realm that you saw is Persia, is Iran. Omer Vatsefir, we said, and the other one is the Greece. The Israel Nimshelu and the Jewish people, like the children of the bird of the Yona. And Shira Shirim said, Yonati Behagvea Sela. The dove is Israel. He split up the animals, you know what? Because the end of the powers will be end. E-N-D. It's going to be E-N-D. All the power they're trying to destroy Israel. Remember what I told you last week? If you fight against Israel, you fight against Hashem. And whoever tried to destroy Israel, 
What happened to him? Gone. Vanished. He said, Kol abeemot, all these animals, you kalin v'olchim. Hamas was very brave. Show, you know, brave, brave in a negative way. But they going, you know, right now already, all their leaders, all their leaders hiding. And 25 already leaders of Hamas are being killed already. All their houses been destroyed. And we will catch them one by one. All of them. Vetatsipor lobatar. But the bird he did not split. Remez. That's the inch Israel kayamim laolam. Israel is Netzach Israel or Ishaker. It's interesting. You know what the Rasha Rab Shimshor Rafael here, she said. Tsipor tehora. You know, when you see the word Tsipor in the text, you know, that only you're talking pure bird. You will not see, and even though we have impure birds, but when you see the word tzipor in the Torah, it's talking about pure bird. And this tzipor represents Israel, which is pure bird. But the tzipor is hasrat onim netulat koach. She doesn't have the strength. And he said, you know, he tzipor adror, but you know what the tzipor, you know what the other name of a bird? We call it in Hebrew. Dror. You know what is dror in Hebrew? How do you say generation in Hebrew? Dor. Oh, dor. How do you say from generation to generation? Dor. You know, if, if you want to say dor square, you know what they say? I'm talking math concept now. You know what I say? Dor square? Dor square is dror. He said, you know what is dror in Hebrew? To open the dictionary, Dror is freedom. We said, Sipor Dror, but the bird has a flight, has the power to fly, but she's free. He said she can go to escape from one place to the other. And everybody is looking for this bird to destroy, to kill it. He she, she symbolized at Am Israel, the Jewish nation. Can be drawn. We can't have Kidabe Korman. So we said that's what Reb Shimshon Raphael here says. So it's what, what the big Hidush that I found in Reb Shimshon Raphael here, that not only, I would like to give you one more thing. Do you remember the word bird in the covenant? The first description of the Torah, it doesn't say bird. Do you remember what it says? He says, Tor Vegozal. Tor Vegozal. And then the end is says Tzipor. You know what is Tor? Tor is old dove. Gozal is the chick. Now, so how many kind of birds we have? Speak up, speak up. I didn't understand what you said is Tor. Uh, Dror is in Hebrew. Dror is freedom. Okay? Dror is freedom. When he said Tzipor Dror, we said Midor Le Dor. We are going from generation to generation. So now, now I want to explain what is my generation. So we have the old dove, Nahon, Tor. We have the Tsipor, the bird, and we have the chick. What is this in the family? What is the, the Tor? The grandfather. What is the Tsipor? The mother. The father. What is the chick? The son. So how many generations we have here? Three generation. That's me door le door. So do you remember what the highlight of the Lela said there? <laughs> yes, when you see your cheeks and your lips. When you see the baby, that's the big victory over Hitler in Mahshmav Zichro. Million point five children been killed, massacred by Hitler. You know, he said, and now when we have a celebrating that at Sipolovata, that means he said the midor le door. Do you remember what we call to the the pillar, the pillow of uh, Yaakov Avinu? Remember what pillow we used? Even. Even. Do you remember what is Even abbreviation? Abba Ben Nechet, father, son, and grandson. Even a hat. So that's, that's the water of he said. When Tzipor, Hirsch said, if you see the word Tzipor, it must be pure. And that's why Hashem used the word Tzipor for the Jewish nation. Not only we have wings, but we are pure. And that's what he said. 
Now, I, I remember last time I spoke to you about this. I gave you the Mark Twain in English. But do you remember I tell you what Mark Twain, he, he put, look here. I put it, I had it in Hebrew. I took it from Google. He said the Egyptian, the Babylonian, the Persian, Camus, in their time, and they tried to, you know, to destroy the Jewish nation. And follow them, the Greeks and the Romans, with a lot of thunders. And many other nations, they took advantage to destroy the Jewish nation. Where are they today? Mark, Mark Twain asked, where are they today? Kayom, today. They are in the darkness. Hayudi, the Jewish man, Ra'ed Kulam, he saw them all. Nitzahed Kulam, he defeated them all. And doesn't show any weakening, any oldness, nothing. How is it possible? You know why? The soldier that we have today is the grandchildren in Yom Kippur War, the grandparents were fighting against Egypt and Syria. In Six Day War, the parents of the grandparents, all the wars from 1948 is the dove. The Tor, the Gozal, and the Mother. Abba, Saba, Saba, Abba, and Nechet. Lot is Shishut. Eranutolo, Kahatav, Chokmatolo, Paga. Not only they are very strong, nobody can defeat their wisdom. Kola Bruim Hadelim. Now listen to the next statement. This is amazing. You should remember it. Kol Abruim Hadelim Prat La Yehudi. You know what he says here? All the creation is, there is an end. <laughs> is an end. You know what is an end? It's not eternity. It's not immortality. He said, Kola beruim hadelim. Prat li except the Jewish nation. So what he says about the Jewish nation? Jewish nation is endless. He said, all the nations is there, you know, they must have an end. But the Jewish person, the Jewish nation is endless. Is immortality. How do you say immortality in Hebrew? Netzach. Yeah, fair, very good. Remember this word. Teach your grandchildren the word Netzach. Israel, lo yishaker. Listen, that's the word of a goy. Kol otzma korat rak kemet. Listen to the last four words of Mark Twain. Mau sot haya Netzach. What is the secret of the immortality of the Jewish people? That means what Mark Twain admit, what he knows for sure, that we are Netzach. He doesn't understand what is the secret. You know why he doesn't understand? Because there is no rationale. <laughs> he didn't go to Jewish school to learn the Brit Ben Abtarim. He doesn't, he has no rationale. He's using his rationale. But you need above rationale. You need something above to understand. But he said, by my sechel, by my mind, I cannot understand. But I know one thing. There is a secret. There is a secret, and I don't know the secret. I'm going toward the end, and now we talk about Iran. Haman said to Ahasuerus, Yes, no. Yes. You know what is yes? There is. There is. But you know another word, yes? Yeshut, entity. Yes. You have to understand, I'm telling you something very strange. Yes. There is. Amehad, one nation. You know which one nation? Israel. Israel. But look what he says. Mefozarum forot ben amim. This is one nation, but they are all over the world. You know, when you have all over the world, it's one, one nation. But he said to Hashverosh, listen, this is a fact. You know, on the Shabbat, they read the same parasha. In Panama, and Israel, and Australia, and America, and New York, we read parashat Lech Lecha. They are spread all over the world, but they, I'm, I'm, Haman did not say it in this word, parasha. I'm just saying, you know, they are spread all over the world, spread around, but it's one nation. It's crazy. He said, we have to get rid of this nation. But the religion is very weird. But you know, I have something for you. I'll give you 10,000 kikar kese, bribed and melech, with money to give to you, but give me the permission to destroy the nation final solution of Haman. We know what he said. You know what happened at the end. So Haman and Hitler and Lavan, everybody knows. But we said we stick together and Hashem help us. 
And if you remember, when he said about the tzipor, do you know another mitzvah of tzipor? Shiloh ha-ken. haken. Do you remember what I said? Who is what I am allowed to do when I see the ken, the nest? What I have to do? How do you say send? How is it to send the mother away? Shalah. Shalah te shalah what is shlichut? You know what is shlichut? Mission. Shlichut is a mission. Mission. Shlichut is a mission. Shalach te shalach et ha'em. You know what is em in English? Mother. Mother. How do you say mother in Hebrew? Ima. Ima. But it says an ima. It says em. Whoever remember I told you. It said shlichut three people got to redeem, the, to make shlichut and to redeem us. It was in Egypt, it was in Purim, and it was yes. in the when the Mashiach will come. Do you remember who redeemed us in Egypt? No, you went to Purim. I said the Egypt. He said, Aharon and Moshe. And Purim what? Esther Mordechai. Shabbat Agadol, what do you say? The full redemption? Eliyahu Mashiach. Eliyahu Mashiach. So he said, so now we know that Hashem always send, you know, we have a mission. Somebody is in a mission. The Mashiach is among us. He's on standby. And he will help us. If not, Eliyahu will not be with him. They are with us. They are hidden while well, they are with us. Do, do you remember now I told you what is, you should know what I would say? Did you ever, somebody told you I have good news and bad news for you? Two news. What do you want to hear first? You want the good news or the bad news? So Hashem said to Abraham, you ask me Bame Edaki Rashena. You ask me twice, once. I'll give you two knowledge, two pieces of information. Look what the Mizra says. Vayomer Lavram, Yadoa Teda ki Gerie Zaracha. He said, Yadoa is the bad news. Teda is the good news. Three, listen to this. Yadoa Shani Mefazran. I want you to know I'm going to spread the Jews among all over the world. But Teda, the good news, Shani Mechansan. I will gather all of them together. Number one, okay? Number two, Yadoa Shani Mashkenan. You know what is Mashkon? Collateral. I will put them under slavery as a collateral, as a Mashkon. That's a bad news. Teda, but I want you to know Shani Porkan, I will save them. Nachon? Number two. Number three, Yadoa Shani Mishabedam. I want you to know the bad news. I'm going to enslave them. Tedashani Goalan. I want you to know the good news. I will read, I will save them. Now he says, and then the end of the Atara, I'm going to say, you know, he said, Vata Israel Avdi, and you, my Israel, my slave, Yaakov. Asher Beharticha, you are my chosen people. That's part of the Aftara. I started Aftara, went to Parasha, I conclude with Aftara. You know what Yaakov? Zera Avraham Oavi. Yaakov is the offspring of Abraham, the one I love very much. Why he said Yaakov and not Abraham? You know why? Remember? Because the Goyim can say Ishmael and Yitzhak. No, 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 no. Yaakov. He is the continuation of Abraham. Asher Yehazikticha. Umer Avdi Atta. You are my slave. Beharticha. I chose you as my nation. Velo me'asticha. Even sometimes I punish you. I know what happened in Simchat Torah, but I'm not sick of you. You have to know, you are my son. I'm not sick of you. I, sometimes I punish, but not, lo me'asticha. Altira. What is Altira? No. By the way, I know, I know people here that the commander asked them, if somebody is afraid, has any fear? He's dismissed. He's dismissed. I don't say. He said, you know, he said, you know, he said, what, what happens? He said, Altira, Asur, Ki Imcha Ani, I am with you. Altishta Ki Ani Elohecha, I'm your God. Imatzticha, I adopted you. Af Azarticha, I'll support you. Be min tzidki with the justice. And Yevoshu vi kalmu kol anacherim bach. All the people who hates you, they will be embarrassed from the big victory I'll give you. You will look for your enemy, you will not find them. 
because they are I no chefes and she milhamtecha will be like nothing compared to your to your people. Ki ani Adonai Elohecha, I am the Lord your God. Mahazik yeminecha, I am holding your right hand. Mahazik yeminecha. Remember what we said. Yemin Hashem neidari bakoa. Yemin Hashem, the her right hand. Mahazik yeminecha. Ho omer lecha saying to you, Al tira. Look how many times Hashem said, Do not have any fear. Ani azarticha. Now I put red and yellow, and that's really the the uh, that's really what I would like to end. You know the the show. Al tirei. Do you remember what animal we parallel the Jewish nation today? The dove. The what dove and what else in the beginning? Another bird we say. Eagle. The eagle. The eagle, right? The eagle is eagle. like Hashem over there. Eagle, dove. Now listen. Tell me if it's a compliment or it's insulting. Al tirei, do not have fear, do not be afraid. Tolaat Yaakov, you know what is tolaat? I think it's like it's an insect. That ah, tolaim, tolaim, tolaim. What is tolaim? When you are looking for in your lettuce, huh? Lettuce, the lettuce, insects like. Nachon, 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 Esther. But the literally the word tolaat. Is warm. 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 Yes. Now, what? Hashem said to Yaakov, "You are like a worm." <laughs> Tell me, it's a compliment? No. Not does it sound? But that's the best compliment. You know why? He says, "Metei." You know why? Tolat Yaakov. He said, "Why tolat Yaakov?" Rashi said, "Tolat Yaakov." You know, one time my father, the rest in peace, he was a gardener. In the vacation, the summer, I used to work with him. And he one time was teaching me. I was, I was, you know, high school kids working, you know, you know, at the Kaplan Hospital in Rehovot. I was there, over there, and he showed me how to cut, how to sew, to use the saw, you know, to cut the wood. And he showed me the teeth. I said, you know, the teeth of the saw. Did you ever see the teeth of the saw? Yes. How, we, how it looks like? Squares. Small squares. Square, but it's going sometimes the wrong direction. One, you know, one to the north, one to the south. You know, we said that's like the teeth of the worm. Because when you have teeth like this, you will never get stuck. That's why we put the saw with this, with this you know, with this order. What is the power? He said the power of the tolaat, he said when you put a tolaat worm in the bottom of the hill and she's going inside the, the sand and you don't see her anymore, what do you think about the tolaat? She's dead. dead or she's alive? She's dead. You know where you will find her alive? On the top of the hill. You know what he said? Look what he says, Rashi. Mishpachat Yaakov ha'halasha ke tolaat. The tolaat, all the power of the tolaat is her mouth. He said, she has no heroism, only in her mouth. Only in her mouth. And now he said, you know, sometimes people think they got rid of us, but we have. Now, could you explain to me who blessed us with our mouth? Well, that's a metaphor, the tolaat. What is the nimshan? Do you remember what Yitzhak said to Yaakov? When he su when he suspected ah he said what he says a call call Yaakov vayadaim yada esav what is a call call Yaakov the voice is the voice of Yaakov and the hands are the hands what is the message to us from this bracha if I hear your voice the hands of esav is down weak. But Hasve Shalom, if I don't hear your voice, the hands of Esav are very strong. What does that mean, the voice of Yaakov? Remember what we have to do? Ah, we have to pray. We have to study Torah. That's, that's why Tolat is a big compliment. From every animal, we have to, to learn something. From the Tolat, we have to learn how to use our mouth. To use our mouth, now we are in the, not in the front line. But to protect the people in the front line, remember what we said last week. Kavel Hashem chazak ve'ametz libecha ve'kavel Hashem. Say Tehilim, 
Take the name. If you want the name of the prisoner, I can send you, by the way. Take every prisoner and make, you know, put a sticker on your fridge and put the name and pray for this prisoner, especially this week when the negotiation is very hard. And pray for IDF. Remember, say, Whoever in the air, in the land, or in the ocean, whoever, wherever it is, Hashem will protect us. Baruch Atah Hashem again, Abraham. So our job is to pray, pray, and ask and study Torah. Remember, when we do now, what we study Torah for one hour and a half, we are here one hour and 35 minutes. You know what I say? But every minute you sit and study, you protect one soldier. You will not believe this, but it's the reality. I'm telling you, we protect. The soldier doesn't know it. But you know, every Torah, every Tehillim said you can protect one soldier. And you will hear many, many Nisim about this war. So continue, Be'ezrat Hashem. And we said, I said, you know, after Hashem will help us to defeat, the reward, he said, Sharchar Be'ma'od, he will send the Mashiach, Mamash, 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 this week, Bimera Amenu, Amen. 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 Amen.